Hi everyone, it's Apple Juice here again, and today I want to be talking about bit manipulation. Bit manipulation is another computer thing and often can come up in interviews and also can be very important to see in manipulating numbers. Now, what is bit manipulation? In the notes below in the little info box, I have it indicated about what exactly bits are, but essentially there are eight bits in a byte and bytes are what the computer takes to basically load things and do everything that it does. It's byte, Bytes is what the computer processes to make it work. And bits and bytes are represented in binary, which is a base 2 language. And normally you guys are used to a base 10 language, which is 0 through 9, but a base 2 language is 0 and 1, base 2. And maybe you heard of binary. I explain it more in the notes below. But it's a basically a language base 2 and that is just represented with zeros and ones. Now what I want to show you guys is the different things you can do to these bits and bytes that can be shown in numbers. Now um, base 10 numbers or your regular everyday numbers 100, 5, negative 10 can be expressed in binary as well. They're just expressed a different way. For instance, 6 is represented as 110. Equal 6, I'll put a comment there. And another variable, j, I'm going to say is 5, which is represented in binary as 0, I mean 1, 0, 1 equals 5. Now, there are things I can do to these two numbers to see to show that they are in fact just represented as bits. One second here. Oops, I forgot my quotation marks and I'm going to do a percent D because I want to print out an integer and I'm going to do I and I'm going to do an OR and a J. So what is this symbol right here? Well first of all it is a kind of big line which is found right above the enter key on most keyboards and what it says and what this is is an OR statement so it's gonna actually look at the bits here and say oh hey is there a one or another one or a w one in I or is there a one in J and if there is then that's true so that's a one so you can think of the ones and zeros as true or false and that these operations are checking for that and outputting that when I put the statement out. So as you can see it's looking for in the leftmost position in the 6 and the 5 so that leftmost one they both have it a 1. It's saying hey is there a 1 in there for the 6? Yes. Is there a 1 in there for the 5? Yes. So that's true. So the one that it's going to import we know the printf statement is going to print out a number that starts with the 1 and then it's going to look at the next bit which is a 1 in 6 and a 0 in 5 but since it's an OR statement it needs a 1 here or a 1 in this in the 5 second digit so it's still okay it returns true which is a 1 and here we go in 6 there's a 0 there but it, then it looks at 5 and says oh there's no 6 in 5 but there is a 1 in 5 and so thus it returns a 1 the only way to return a zero in an OR statement is to have a zero and a zero. But let's see, so according to my calculations, this printf statement should return seven. Let's see if that's what happens. And hey, it did return seven. Woohoo! That's nice to see. And the next statement we're going to use is the AND statement. So you saw your AND, and if you learn just basic discrete math this should be really easy to you this is the same thing except of, instead of or use and so and you need a true and a true value you need this and that to return a true value you can't just have one or none so as you see here let me get rid of this I'm gonna look at the leftmost bits here I've got a one in six and a one in the five value in the same slot so that's gonna return a true value in the second values for both of these, I have a 1 in the 6, but a 0 in the 5. So I have 1, but I don't have the other. And since this is AND, I'm going to return a 0, which is false. And then for the 0 value, I'm going to return, I see a 0, so I automatically know this is false. 
and I see a zero here. So hopefully this and statement will return four. Let's see. Let me run it. And boom, four, yay, okay. We did that. And the next, okay, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to get rid of the J there. It was nice while it lasted. We'll miss you, J. It's part of my name. And I'm gonna we're gonna worry about the shifting operator. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to shift the bits. So as you can so what this does is it shifts this number i to the left by the indicated number of zeros. So what do I mean by this? I mean that by putting a one here, I'm gonna shift the whole int i representation over a bit, which is just going to be zero. So hopefully this bit will now be represented as one one zero zero because I'm shifting it over by one. So essentially I'm adding a zero. And what this usually does is double. Okay guys, sorry, I had to leave for a second, but now I'm back and back to where I was with shifting the bits to the left. So what this is going to do is this going this is going to shift i over by one bit. So it will just create an extra zero. So it's kind of like in base 10 times it by 10 by adding a zero to the end. This adds a zero to the end, which effectively doubles it. And as you can see, when we run this, we get 12 instead of six. And if I added a two here, hopefully, or I know, we will get 24. And as you can see, we do get 24 because adding it by two, putting it over by one would double it, putting it over by two would quadruple it because you it's exponential to the power of two and putting it over by three I don't know if I'm good at math uh, 48 I guess yay 48 okay and now we're gonna do the other bit operator which is moving everything to the right What this is going to do is it's going to move everything to the right. So as you can see here with the 110 in the 6, what I'm going to do here is it's going to shift everything to the right. So the 110 is now going to become 011 as I like to think about it or 3 as I like to think of it because I can add the 1 here. And I can add the 2 in the second most digit indicating those things. And there you go. I've got 2. I mean I've got 3. As you can see, I moved them over. So what did that do? That halved the result. Woohoo! Halved it. Ooh, that's always awesome. What if I did it again? Let's find out. It's fun to try things out in computer science. It makes you better. I get one because that makes sense because that would move everything over except for the last one on the edge. Ooh, and I get one. So make sure you know your bit manipulation. There is one last bit. I should tell you about and that's the negate op operator which turns everything to gosh where is it I'm sorry guys I am being very incompetent there we go it's the little squiggly thing right above right next to the one on the keyboard and what it does is it negates or switches all the ones and zeros so all the ones become zeros and all the zeros becomes ones and vice versa but if I run this I'm gonna get a negative number instead of what you may think. So you may think we're going to get 0, 0, 1, right? So the answer is going to be 1. And that is not exactly true because, well, I'll try to explain it after I run this. I'm getting negative 7 instead of 1 because actually the integer is much bigger than what I've been showing you. The integer is represented, let me format this, sorry. Um, that was control shift F if, F if you're using Eclipse. And basically there are many there's there can be eight or sixteen zeros depending on how your computer defines it or places to put a value so what's happening here is when I call when I'm calling the squiggly and reversing all the integers you may think that six just represents one one zero but in fact there's all these other zeros that are getting turned that are getting changed to ones and in fact the last zero the biggest um, power of two actually represents neg a negative number, represents a very big whatever two to the whatever power is going to be negative. So by flipping it, I'm actually making it negative. And 
Because of that, there is something called an unsigned int and a signed int. Signed ints can be negative and positive, and unsigned ints can go from zero to a very high positive number. And I hope to talk about that soon, too. I hope you guys all enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you understand everything. I, def I definitely look to Google or see if you can find anything else about unsigned integers or signed integers if you don't know exactly what's happening. But I'll try to make a tutorial on it as fast as I can. Thank you, guys, and I hope you have a great day.